Good morning. We are Eau Claire Baptist Church, and we welcome you this morning as we worship our Savior. So I invite the praise team to come forward. They'll be singing Rescue Me. I invite the rest of you to stand. We'll have the words on the screen, and let's all sing together. as we pray together. Father in heaven, we are grateful for this day of worship. Lord, we do thank you that you hear our cry and our call to you. And Father, every cry for help, every cry for rescue, Lord, every call to you for a need, Lord, your word is assuring to us that you hear us, that you give ear to us, Lord. You, you are eager to hear from your children. And so today, our Father, we worship you, and we ask you to draw near to us as we seek to draw near to you. Would you bless this time of worship this day? We ask it in Jesus' name, and all of God's people said together, amen. Well, I'll let you be seated today. Welcome this morning. It is so good to have you here as we worship 
together. I am so happy to be back with you. My family and I are so glad to be back with you as well today. So thank you for giving us some time away last Sunday. I know Beth Greer did an amazing job leading in worship. And so I'm happy to be back with you this morning also. Uh, let me just share with you just a couple of needs or rather a couple of announcements coming up in the life of the church. And I'll mention some of these during the prayer time as well. Uh, but uh, be praying for our RAs who are away at McCall. They'll be traveling back today. So we'll pray for them during the prayer time. But be mindful that they're traveling and we trust uh, they had a great weekend at Camp McCall. A couple of things coming up I want to tell you, tell you about. Uh, for, for those of you that are part of church council, please remember we'll be meeting tonight at 6 in the Fellowship Hall. And so uh, we'll be efficient with our time. So all of our members of church council, I hope you'll be back at 6 to meet with us as we do some fall planning uh, for the months coming up. Also want to let you know this week, uh, Wednesday through Friday, the teen college will be happening. And so if you have any questions on that, you can see Richard or Carolyn or anyone on the youth committee. So we're excited for what our youth will experience this week. That'll be in the evening, uh, Wednesday through Friday. So lots of fun stuff happening. I think it all starts at the trampoline park, I believe. So um, for any of our youth, you're welcome to be a part of that. I um, want to let you know, coming up on the 21st, we are tentatively planning to have a service of testimony. So as we end and wrap up all of the summer ministries that have happened for Koinonia Vacation Bible School, for the GAs, the RAs who've had camp, for Teen College, we'll have a time of sharing on the 21st. And just to uh, share together and celebrate all that God has done this summer through the life and ministry of our church. So uh, you want to be a part of that. And then coming up later this fall, uh, two things I want to tell you about. So starting September 11th, I'll be offering a workshop uh, teaching us how to listen to God through the use of the spiritual disciplines of prayer, meditation, solitude, and journaling. So I'm excited about leading this in our church. Uh, anyone's welcome to come. Just let me know ahead of time. I do ask that our deacons and church council make a special effort to attend this. And so it'll be a five week workshop Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. And uh, then later in the fall, we're gonna participate in a uh, emphasis that's taking place through the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, and the emphasis is simply called Seeing Jesus. And so a lot of good things coming up in the life of our church, and I uh, want you to be a part of what God is doing. So uh, please keep those announcements in mind. And uh, with that, we will continue our worship together with this next hymn. And following that, I'll have a time with the children down front. So stand with us as we sing.
I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I Thank you. Let's be seated, children. Let's come up now for the children's message. All right. Uh, come on down for any of our children that would like to join us today. Uh, so this is August 7th, and that means something is quickly approaching in the month of August. So the summer is starting to wind down. And fall is in close in sight now, um, but somebody tell me what's happening in the next week or two. Anybody want to share? They look really excited about what's happening in a week or two, right? So um, any volunteers, what you, where you might be going in a week or two? School. <laughs> School, all right. So... Um, <laughs> okay, this could get a little dangerous up here. <laughs> All right, so back to school, right? Who's excited about back to school? Anybody? All right, one, two, three. All right, it's all right not to be excited about back to school, but I'm glad. I know there's probably a mixture of feelings, but it is coming quick, all right? So um, anybody, have you done your back to school shopping yet? Notebooks, pencils, book bags? lunch boxes, all that good stuff. We have typically waited until like the last minute and we go to Target and the shelves are empty. And so we started early this year. Um, so I hope you are getting ready for all of those things. So I just wanna encourage you uh, and we will do a back to prayer time for our teachers and students going back to school. On So on the 24th, uh, excuse me, on the 27th, 21st, there we go, on the 21st here, we will do a back to school prayer emphasis for all of our teachers. Um, let me ask how many teachers are going back coming up. So I know we are blessed with quite a few educators in our church. So teachers, we're praying for you as well. So um, in our message today, we're gonna be in 1 Corinthians 10. And there's an amazing verse that I wanna share with you. We won't look at it today in, with the adults, but it is in the same chapter, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31. It's one of my favorite verses that I actually, actually learned about in high school because as a ninth grader, one of my good friends had this shirt and it had 1 Corinthians 10, 31 on the back of it. I've never forgotten it, but it says, for whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do all to the glory of God. And so I want to encourage you to get ready to go back to school uh, to keep that mindset, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink. And we could add some of that to say whether you're going back to school or whether you're doing chores at home, whatever you do, uh, do it for the glory of God. And so um, I want to encourage you with that. Before we pray, if I could have you just tell us what school you're going to so we could know to pray for your school this year. Logan Elementary. Logan Elementary, great school. Lonnie B. Nelson Elementary School. Lonnie B. Nelson, great school. Um, Miss La'ai Sturgeon is a teacher there. I don't know if you know her, but we go way back with La'ai. So she's fifth grade, I think. So you might have her in a couple of years. I don't know which hallway, but she's, she's an awesome teacher. So um, Cammie, you're Lonnie B. as well? All right. Creighton Middle School. Creighton Middle School. And Luke, do you want to share the name of your school? Kindergarten. Kindergarten. That says it all. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, let me pray for you. I want to pray for your schools, for your teachers. And then on the 21st, we'll also have a special time of prayer for everyone going back to school, teachers included. Okay? Let's pray together. Father, we're so grateful for all that you've taught us this summer and for so many opportunities we've had to serve you. 
And so, Lord, we pray today for every student getting ready to go back to school. Um, we pray for Kaylee as she goes to Creighton. We pray for Cami and Malachi as they start at Lonnie B. Nelson. Pray for Kennedy as she starts at Logan Elementary, for Luke as he starts kindergarten, for the teachers that are present with us, Lord, and for others in our fellowship. We just pray that you give them safety, protection, Lord. Pray that you help them along their educational journey. For those uh, starting college, we lift them up to you as well, Lord. And uh, just help all of us, Father, whatever we do, whether we eat or drink, help us to do it all to the glory of God, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. All right, for anyone five and younger, you're free to be dismissed for Children's Church. And uh, we'll continue our worship together. And our next hymn this morning, let's all stand as we sing, please. <clears throat> be seated. Well, I invite you to turn with me in your Bible to the book of 1 Corinthians chapters 9 and 10. And I want to read our scripture today and then we'll transition to our prayer time and then to our offering this morning. So our scripture focus uh, for the message today begins at 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 and I'll read beginning there uh, reading through 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13. Uh, these two Sundays today and next week we'll be spending some time together in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, today we'll be talking about God's blessings and God's instructions that we see in these verses. And so uh, follow along with me in your Bible. Also the verses are in your bulletin. And I'll begin reading 1 Corinthians 9 verse 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. They then do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Therefore I run in such a way as not without aim. I box in such a way as not beating the air, but I discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified. Chapter 10, verse 1. For I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea 
And all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they were drinking from a spiritual rock, which followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not well pleased, for they were laid low in the wilderness. And now these things happened as examples for us, so that we would not crave evil things as they also craved. Do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and stood up to play, nor let us act immorally as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in one day. Nor let us try the Lord as some of them did and were destroyed by the serpents. Verse 10. Nor grumble as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. And now these things happened to them as an example that they were written for our instruction upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Verse 12, therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed that he does not fall. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful. Can we say amen to that? God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also so that you will be able to endure it. May God bless the reading of his word today and as we pray together, just to mention a few prayer needs in the life of our church, I ask you to pray for the family of Miss Virginia Mathis. Uh, Miss Virginia's daughter, Nancy Heiler, passed away early last Sunday morning unexpectedly, so uh, please pray for Miss Virginia. They will plan a private uh, memorial service at a later time, likely to be held uh, in um, in the place where Miss Mathis's other daughter lives. And so uh, that's in Manning, by the way. Uh, right now, um, Miss Virginia's son says they're not sharing this news with her. Uh, because of her dementia, they don't want to set her back. So please pray for this family. Um, and then also the things I mentioned earlier, please lift our RAs up to the Lord as they're traveling back. And also lift up uh, Teen College to the Lord this week. Uh, I want to just say a quick note. Um, also, there's a great thank you note up here from our friends of Koinonia and Freedom School. And so they wrapped up on the 28th of July. And I'll be praying for them as they gear up to begin after school later in August. So be praying for this ministry as well. Uh, take a moment. There's a lot in here to read. So take a moment uh, when you leave today to take a look. I'll set this up front. And so as we pray together, I know you have your needs as well. And we want to take those to the Lord. As I pray, the ushers will come. And after the prayer, we'll receive our offering today. Would you bow with me, please? Father, we know that it is a great privilege to come before you. And so, Lord, we bring to you today our praises of thanksgiving. Father, we bring to you today... Uh, just a, a spirit of gratitude and thankfulness for the many ways you blessed us. And Lord, we also come before you today asking forgiveness because we know, Lord, we, um, we every day fall short of who you've called us to be. Lord, there's not one of us here within this room that is perfect. And so today, Lord, we all stand in need of your forgiveness and we confess to you today, both privately and publicly, uh, that we have sinned against you. Lord, we tell you that we're sorry for that, and we confess to you today and seek your forgiveness. And Lord, as we pray together, we also bring our needs before you. We lift up the family of, um, of Nancy's family, Lord, and her passing. We pray for them. Father, for the other needs we mentioned today, we lift these up to you. And now, Lord, as we have a time of offering, would you bless both the gift and the giver? And uh, would you draw near to us today during this time of silent meditation, we ask in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said together, amen.
our text today in 1 Corinthians, we get a glimpse of God's blessings and God's instructions. And these really go hand in hand, as we'll see in the example that Paul gives us from the nation of Israel. And as we read what Paul is writing in this text, Paul is really giving us an overview of God's blessings on his life. We get an idea of this in 1 Corinthians 9, verses 24 through 27, which we read together, knowing that that God had called the Apostle Paul to a very special calling and task. And I remind you today, much like the Apostle Paul, you as a child of God, you as a Christ follower, can share this with Paul himself that God too has called you to a special task. God has called you to do his work much in the same way he called and set Paul apart as an apostle so too as a child of god today god has work for every one of us to do god has a calling for every one of us in which we are to serve for some of you coming up soon that calling will be served out in the classroom for some of you this summer that calling was served out in the rooms next door god has called you to serve him And Paul is setting up the tone for this in verses 24 through 27. And essentially, Paul is speaking about the great opportunity God has given to him to serve the Lord. And Paul, really at the heart of what he's saying in this text is Paul recognizes the great blessing that he's been given. And quite honestly, as we read the tone in which this text is written, Paul is essentially saying that he doesn't want to mess this up. He doesn't want to fail. He doesn't want to fall short. He doesn't want to give in to any temptation or sin that would disqualify him for the work that God has called him to do. We see that Paul, if you look at verse 24, Paul is really striving for faithfulness, to be faithful in what God has called him to do. And Paul uses the great analogy of those who are running a race. And he says, all of them run, but only one receives the prize. Paul is talking about the faithfulness with which he wants to serve His Lord is a great motivator for all of us to be faithful in the area that God has called you. To be faithful to serve God with what He has given you. Paul is talking about this faithfulness that he wants to run, verse 24, in such a way that we might win. Paul is talking about, if you notice verse 25, in the blessings that God has given him to serve, Paul is talking about striving for what really matters. Don't miss this in verse 25, but he he again is, um, is using the illustration of an athlete in verse 25, and he says, everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. And he says they do it to receive a perishable wreath, some kind of reward or prize, right? We all like prizes, don't we? We all like some type of reward. I mean, it makes it feel worthwhile. And Paul is saying so many run or compete for those things which will perish, but we... In that same context, we compete or we run for those things which are imperishable. Those things that are not able to be destroyed. Those things which will count for all eternity. You know, it really is a good call for self-examination. And I was thinking about this this week. What if when we stand before God, and we all will stand before Him one day, what if when we stand before God, He lays before us all of those things that we 
did or thought or all of those things which we gave effort towards that had eternal value. And I wonder about my own life. It is a great call for self-examination for you as well to think about if God were to lay all of those things before you as you stand before him, all of those things which are imperishable, what will be there for you? What, what prayers of faith will be there for you? What, uh, what acts of service to the Lord will be there for you? Not that we, are, uh, not that we have a works-based salvation, but it really is something to think about. Those things which are imperishable. And so Paul is reminding us to strive for what matters for all eternity. And then he says in verse 27... He says, I discipline my body. I discipline myself so that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified. It it is the great prayer of any pastor or leader, 1 Timothy 3, 2, Titus 1, 6, to be faithful and not not to give in to things that would disqualify one for serving the Lord in such a capacity as Paul illustrates here. And so at the heart of this text, if you don't get anything else today, get this, Paul doesn't want to mess it up. Paul wants to be faithful with what God has given him. Paul wants to be faithful to do what God has called him to do. A great thing to strive for, for you and for me as well. To be faithful with what God has given us. To be faithful with what God has called us to do. To be faithful with those opportunities that God has presented before us. A lot of great motivation is here um, in my own study, as you know, that I'm preparing to lead a workshop here starting September the 11th. And so as I read this text a few weeks ago in my Bible reading, uh, this word discipline stood out to me. And so some of what Paul is hinting toward are perhaps some of the spiritual disciplines that you and I are called to practice as as believers and followers of Jesus and I'm so excited to share with you more about what God has been teaching me in this area and so Paul is essentially saying again he doesn't want to mess up the opportunities God has given to him and so to illustrate this further I love what Paul does in this writing don't miss this he transitions right over into verse or chapter 10 after saying essentially I want to be faithful I'm running for the prize that is not imperishable I discipline myself so that I might not be disqualified and Paul moves on to give one of the greatest examples in the history of God's people 1 Corinthians 10 verse 1 when he says I do not want you to be unaware brethren and he moves into the example of the nation of Israel how much we can learn from this nation and Paul here talks about the blessings that God gave to them and if you notice some of this some of these blessings uh, they passed through the sea Paul calls out he talks about the cloud that God gave to protect them by day and to lead them by night If you notice verse 3, Paul talks about the tremendous blessings of the great spiritual food that God gave them in the wilderness. He talks about in verse 4 how they drank from the same spiritual drink and they were drinking from the uh, rock which followed them. And Paul, by the way, in verse 4 points out that this was Christ, a, a beautiful portrayal of one of those pre-incarnate visions or appearances of Christ, um, all of these good blessings God gave them. Now, you know what? God has given you some good blessings in your life, has he not? God has been faithful to you in ways that, uh, ways that if you sit down and really 
contemplate and think about his blessings like the people of Israel, you can look back at all of those ways God has blessed you and protected you and provided for you. So many blessings that God has given us that we are so undeserving of. I was sharing with my wife this morning uh, before leaving the house, just uh, stayed up late last night just reflecting over the past six months, I uh, won't go into detail, but some of you know God uh, took my family and I through a trial back in February and just uh, looking back at the way God shaped circumstances, the way God directed paths in our lives, the way God did some things that were out of the ordinary. And like the people of Israel, you too can look back at your life and, and look and remember ways that God has protected you, ways that God has provided for you. By the way, some of those lessons come at a great cost, don't they? A great cost of trial, sometimes a great cost of suffering, sometimes a great cost of circumstantial troubles as your pastor. I know some of you have been through that and I am walking with you prayerfully alongside of you as God is, is leading you through difficult circumstances. And for the nation of Israel, some of those blessings came at a great cost. But notice what they did. Um, and this is where we want to be careful in God's blessings and God's instructions. Because somewhere along the way of all of those good things that God did for the nation of Israel, Paul is bringing to the forefront of our minds. God fed them. God gave them water in the wilderness. God parted the sea for them. But look at verse 5. Here's the scary part. And here's where Paul is saying, I don't want to mess this up. And here's where he's writing to the church of Corinth and to us. Verse 5, nevertheless, with most of them, God was not well pleased. Quite a scary thought, by the way. For they were laid low in the wilderness. One writer says that, they, that many died because of lack of self-discipline. And because they did not remember the Lord and they, they disobeyed and they forsook the Lord. And Paul is saying that he doesn't want to do this. God is giving him this blessing to serve. God is giving him this opportunity. And unlike many in the nation of Israel, God, or Paul doesn't want to mess this up. Verse 6, they, these things happened as examples for us so that we would not crave evil things as they also craved. And so some things happened in the nation of Israel and some things can happen in our lives if we're not careful. These three things, they, Paul is saying the nation of Israel, they lost their focus somewhere along the way. They got distracted somewhere along the way, perhaps, they forgot those blessings that God gave to them. Somewhere along the way, they lost clarity. They lost focus. And this is what Paul is highlighting about the nation of Israel in verses 1 through 5. And if you, like Paul, don't want to mess up what God has given you, can I encourage you today, do not lose focus. Do not lose focus on that college opportunity God has given you. Do not lose focus with that God, with that job to which God has called you. Do not lose focus with what God has called you to do as uh, the role or member of your family in which you fulfill. Somewhere along the way, they lost focus. And Paul tells us next in verse 6, somewhere along the way, second... They craved evil things. And uh, we don't have to look far in this world to see that evil is rampant. 
Paul talks later about temptation in verse 13. We don't have to look very far to see that that temptation is wide and broad and there is an enemy that is looking to cloud the minds of, of people so that they would be distracted from exactly what Paul is saying, distracted from what God would have them do in their lives. And so do not crave evil things. Paul highlights some of how this happened. Look at verse 7. He calls out idolatry. Do not be idolaters. And how, how sad and yet how easy it was for the nation of Israel to give in to idolatry. And yet we, if we're not careful, do the same. Second, he says, let us not, verse 8, uh, nor let us act immorally. Uh, wow. So much could be said about that. And Paul hints at an event that happened in Numbers chapter 20 where uh, many had given into immorality. And in verse 8, Paul calls this out that some of them did give into immorality and 23,000 fell in one day. Can I urge you today to live a life of purity, to keep our minds and our hearts pure before God if you're married, to keep your marriage pure before God if you're single, to, uh, for the decisions that you make with your body, to keep that pure before God in all of those elements, Paul says, that they gave in to immorality. Verse 9, he tells them or tells us, let us not try the Lord as some of them did. And that was why they lost their focus, the nation of Israel, why they messed up in so many ways what God had given, given them. They tried the Lord. Verse 10, he says another one, nor grumble as many of them did. All of these things, idolatry, immorality, uh, testing the Lord, grumbling, all of these things contributed to them losing their focus. And Paul says essentially that it comes down to uh, back in earlier in the verse we looked at, a lot of it comes down to lack of discipline, lack of self-discipline. And for us, it could come down to the lack of spiritual disciplines in our lives let us be careful that we, unlike the nation of Israel, let us be careful that we not give in to idolatry, immorality, trying the Lord, grumbling. The big picture here is losing our focus. And I pray today that as we look at God's blessings and God's instructions, I pray today that you'll know in closing in verse 13 that God is faithful and he talks here about temptation that even when you are tempted in ways that feel overwhelming, you know, we, we hear this phrase, God will not give you any more than you can bear. You've heard that. And if you've wondered sometimes that that is the case, you're not alone. But specifically, the Bible talks about temptation here. And temptation is certainly great. And there is a destroyer that would seek to distract and destroy you. And I encourage you as we close to follow well this instruction. And maybe what God has been calling me to in my personal life is to step up in your practice of the spiritual disciplines. To step it up so that you do not lose focus. To step it up so that you do not crave evil things. And to step it up so that you do not give in to temptation. Maybe our prayer should be this as we close. God, help us not to mess it up. Amen. Help us not to mess it up. You can do this by verse 13, knowing that God is faithful. And as your pastor, I'm praying for you and I'm praying for us that we will move forward with focus, that we will strive for those things that are imperishable, that we will discipline ourselves like Paul says and that ultimately we will rest in God's faithfulness. And I invite you to do just that in your lives today.
Would you stand with us as we move now into a time of invitation and praying for you this week that, that God will indeed show himself faithful to you. And we'll sing together this hymn number 311, Let Jesus Come Into Your Heart. Would you sing with us? We have a time of fellowship downstairs, so please join us. I invite you to stay for Sunday school as well. And as we dismiss today, I leave you with this benediction. Uh, the Apostle Paul tells us that God who's called you is faithful and he will keep you. And may he be faithful to you every day this week as we strive to be faithful to him. God bless you this day. Thanks for being with us this morning. Love you so much. Have a blessed day in the Lord.